Today in the podcast, I speak with Barry Coffing, a band evangelist and music entrepreneur. He has built a series of companies and services that enable musical artists to be fairly paid from the licensing and use of their music. His brand goals are to be fair and transparent in all his dealings and to prove that the really nice guys finish first. He has written a number one hit song. He has been nominated for an Emmy. He has had major publishing, distribution and record deals where he really learned a lot. And he has written over 200 songs for film and TV. He is an award-winning film producer. His specialities in the music business include technology, legal, licensing, distribution, streaming and live events. His specialities in music creation include composition, production and scoring. He is also a gold certified music sales person. I mean, you have a whole experience with yeah. writing songs, Emmys. Yes, definitely. You, you've managed tons of managed, stuff. So I've managed to lose an Emmy, so that's always important. Well, lose it, yeah, nominated. <laughs> yeah, yeah that's, a, that's an interesting perception. Now, what I'll say to the listeners in today's podcast is um, there is an associated YouTube video that if you want to watch this presentation, which is going to involve um, visuals, um, if you click in the show notes below, you'll see a YouTube link. And you, that'll take you to the visual form of this podcast, because if you're in, you know, if you're really interested in getting into the music industry and understanding the business side of it and understanding all the opportunities that are there, the visual aspect to this podcast, I think you'll enjoy. So just look for the YouTube link in the show notes. So I think, Barry, you're going to do a screen share now. So yeah. to get this thing kicked off. So would you just like to get that going? Sure. And, and part of what we're doing with the visuals, the reason the video is more is I have, I'll, I'll try to say everything in as completely as I can, but there are visuals with, with everything that I'm going to show you that it will make even more sense. You know, this, this is an outgrowth of some technology that we were working on and we needed to map the music business to say, where, where are all the people, where are the, what are the processes, everything. And I spent weeks kind of going over, all of the different aspects. Um, and when we, we got it done, we went, wow. And so I ended up doing an infographic that kind of is an overview of of the music business that so you could pop up while you're talking about your own career. And, I, and I've given uh, uh, I've given Sylvia a, a version of that that she's welcome to send out to people, you know. Yeah, well, I'll have Hello. a link to the show notes, the visual as well, that it's just clickable and they can get into that. But I just want to explain to the listeners as well, this is the first um, interview of a two-part series initially to explain this whole music business. Some people call it a music jungle um, <laughs> because it's pretty uh, detailed. There's a lot of moving parts to it. So... Um, Okay, Barry, I'll let you take it from here. And so this this is just a, a starting thing. It's basically, I've got a, a company I'm launching called We Get Music that's going to be a, a music discovery platform. And we're taking a lot of our experiences with the other companies and putting into that. So this is just sort of our our uh, first thing. But it's, uh, it's called We Get Music. That's the, the name. Yeah, it will be called. It doesn't exist yet. Mm -hmm. You know, but uh, um, so... Uh, when I, when people talk about the music business, uh, I, I think the first thing you have to understand that it's half music and half business. And uh, and the other thing that's really important, it's a people business. We've all heard, oh, it's a people business. In this case, it really is. You know, and so we'll start with the things that people kind of understand, the business, the management. We'll handle the business stuff first. So these are the guys with the briefcase that come in and you know, we, we're all familiar with them. You've got to, uh, eventually when you're successful, you will have a management team. You'll have a manager with some staff. You'll have your lawyer. You'll have an accountant. You'll have an agent. You'll have a road manager. All the people that handle your business affairs. At the beginning, you're going to be doing all this yourself. But eventually, <clears throat> you'll start to build out a management team. And the first thing that you're going to need almost immediately is either with your manager or by yourself. If you begin to negotiate a deal and you don't know what a good deal is and a bad deal, you need to fire yourself. Take yourself out to dinner, go, hey, we're going in another direction, but do not negotiate if you don't know what a good deal is. Oh so my you're goodness, probably... so, there's so many stories of bad deals. I mean, you don't want to go down that route. No, if you're you not make informed, sure. don't do it. Yeah, get a, get somebody, get somebody who knows. It can be a manager, it doesn't have to be a lawyer, but it better be somebody who understands how the, how the whole thing works. And then once you do that and you start making money, I don't care if it's from streaming or airplay or your 
your live performances, whatever, you start making money, guess what you need? You need accounting. Now, I should just say here as well that Barry is an expert in licensing. So um, he's got a whole knowledge there. And I mean, licensing is a big discussion right in its own. I don't want to go down that rabbit hole, but it's just something that as an artist, it's one thing to be very informed about. Oh, yeah, it's, it'll, it'll be something. It'll be part of what we talk about further. But mm -hmm. but like when you're getting into the accounting part, like if you don't, you got budgeting, you've got banking, you've got taxes. If you're if you're bringing in money of any kind, you need to start figuring out how to use it wisely and how to account for it. Yes. Uh, then you start to build up and you need reporting. You need to go. You know, you got to start measuring stuff. Are my are my fans growing? Are the ticket sales doing well? What are my streams? What are my social numbers? So you've got to have somebody keep an eye on that. And then if you're ultimately successful, uh, your name, your brand, suddenly people want to put it on T-shirts and on sneakers and have you, you know, sponsor a Guinness contest. So when you're done, you're going to need professional people to handle all this. And this is all buttoned up. Everybody's got their neat little compartment. It is very civilized, very organized. And this type of stuff happens in any business that you're going to do. However... That's so the, just, the business sorry, part. Right, yeah. just, just to review this. So it's this is the business and management section of the music business. So it incorporates a management team, business and legal, accounting, revenue, reporting, and branding. They're the main chapters, if you will, of this business management section. Yep. Those are the those are the those are the areas of of business that you need to have managed. Yeah. And you that know, you need so to be informed easy. about, really, that you need to be informed about, or at least if you don't know, get informed. Well, it's not even just informed about it, but ultimately somebody in a professional manner should handle this for you. Yeah. It, at the beginning, it can be you and you need to be as educated as you can. The, the more successful you become, uh, the more you need professionals to do it. Yeah. You can't yeah. be your cousin doing your accounting. Oh, no, unless he's qualified, you know, that is. Yeah, that's, that's how a lot of a uh, lot of families break up and money gets stolen. So that's that's the, the business and management part. Mm -hmm. Now, when we talk about creation and marketing, well, that is a completely different set of people. And so what you've got is you've got all these people of, of different ilks and different, you know, expertise. And you've got to get all these different creative people to to work together. So if we start talking to the creation part, which is the making the music, the first thing you, you start with on your team is you start with people that are incredibly filled with passion. You're not looking at, let me see your law degree. Who else have you, you know, you, you want to see what they've done. But when you're dealing with incredibly passionate people, everybody in the creative team, the guitar player thinks the most important part is the guitar. The songwriter, oh, it's all about the song. The producer, wow, it's the production. The engineer, it's how it was recorded. You got all these people that think they're the most important part and you got to get them to work together. You take all those people and turn them into a team that works together and says, we're going to make this great record, guitar player, songwriter, producer, engineer, all of this stuff. And as an artist or as a, a manager or as a label, you got to take all these crazy, passionate people, form them into a team, and then you got to figure out the hat trick of turning it into a vision. They've got to share your vision for the record or the art that you want to create. So it's messy. Things bump in. Nobody's in crate in in straight lines. Nobody stays in there. The guitar player will tell you what he thinks is wrong with the drums. The songwriter will tell you why he hates the production. It's a it's a it's a volatile mix of people. Uh, on the other side, when you talk about marketing, well, you've got a bunch of other creative people. They're videographers and photographers and stylists and all those people, and you got to get all these crazy people to listen to the music and go, here's the image we think that, that best portrays that music. So you got to get all those guys to agree. Then you've got to get them to agree on the next part, which is the story. What's the story of the band? Um, it, is, it is still, this has been since the dawn of time, you go into a, a label or something, they're going to go, what's the story? Oh, well, this band, uh, you know, they started out over here, they did this, and they've got to they've have the visuals that, that, you know, advance the music and tell an interesting story. And then ultimately their big pass fail is the marketing materials that they create had better make people feel something. They better music, look at that. Yeah. Well, music, music has, feeling. well, this isn't even the music part. Music, of course, you don't even have to put feeling. This is the creative thing. If I watch your video and I go, 
it's interesting. Why was that horse there? That they didn't do their job. They got to say, oh, when the little girl loses her goldfish in that third chorus, I mean, I started to cry. You've got to create, you know, when you see the image of a metal band, they're scary. They're happy. They're fun. She's sexy. He's hot. He looks like my next door neighbor. I like him. If they, if you create marketing materials and no one feels anything, fail. You got five guys on the on making the record and they're making five different records. You fail. So it is a, a very complex thing when it comes to the people of the music and the people of the business. So it seems to me that the lead of any band has to be a great communicator, networker, good manager. Well, in a perfect world. But Ideally. And yeah, there, are, you know, there are stories of that, of some bands that they have got a reputation of having an excellent lead guy that looks after everything. I've heard stories well, of that. The most there there are, ones. but but there are way more stories of, of people who can't communicate. They'll go, they'll have somebody do a video and go, oh, that's horrible. We hate it. Well, you didn't communicate what you wanted. We told you we were going to make this. Well, we didn't know it would come out like that. Mm -hmm. I mean, there is communication is the number one struggle. Oh, I can't agree with you more. Can't agree with you more. Communication is critical in any form of business, whether it is the yeah, music exactly. business or anything else. It's it's just the, the first place you go to to solve a problem. Well, it, if you don't communicate well, you create problems. Oh, yeah, completely. completely. All right. So that's the, that's sort of the first thing. So those are the people that we're dealing with. Now in the music business, the next thing that I'm going to go over is what are the products that we're creating? So when you're in any business, you're making widgets, you're making clothes, you're making this. Well, we make music. Well, how does that come about? And so I sort of broke that down into two sections. Uh, when it comes to making music, music is created, it's built, it's generated. You know, you know what it's not? It's not manufactured. You can go in the recording studio with the same writer, the same artist, the same band, the same recording, recording engineer, the same studio, and you go in one year, it's this, the next year, it's that. It doesn't come out the same. It's, you don't get to, you, you know, the product doesn't come out the same. It's like a, it's like a handmade product. Each one is different. There is no rinse and repeat and you'll get the same result. So anyone who tells you that it's manufactured, yeah, they can, they can have a, a feeling of manufacturing, but the truth is it's a folly to think you can manufacture music because you can't. Mm -hmm. The other thing that's interesting about the way that music is created is it's usually driven by the artist or the band. They start there. So we, we have a lot more in common with uh, somebody who, who makes a, has a great cookie recipe or, or an inventor because the first step in our world is we make the product. No company, no formal papers, no nothing. You go out and somebody makes some music, does some videos, maybe makes a t-shirt. And they take this product and they go show it to their friends. No difference than I, you bake cookies. Man, you should sell these. Oh, you know, they start with a product. They got an idea and, and the artist drives it and does it themselves with their own money or their friends or whatever. And then if it starts to become successful where it's commercial, then you're running all, you got to go get all those guys in the briefcase, you know, because you got to build structure around it. So you've got a product that people want now you build a company or an organization around it. You, you've got to build a network and a workforce to help you do it. You got to build your brand, your story. You are chasing, you know, you, you're spending all your time at the beginning, pushing a rock up the hill. Now the rock's chasing you down the hill, you know, and you need some help to, to, to control it. And then ultimately, like in any, uh, any manufacturing process or creation process, there are byproducts. What, what is left over from your efforts? And if you're successful, you're going to generate money. You're going to build a buzz or, or stuff like that. You're going to you're going to generate or create a public reputation, good or bad. All these things also happen. So at the end of the day, when it comes to the the how it's created, it's a little backwards. And I'm not saying if you sign with a major label, it's much more traditional. You've got the structure, you've got this. But for independent artists, no, this is not how this is how it generally happens. Well, I think for somebody who is just getting into the understanding of this world, there's a great series on Netflix which covers a singer by the name of Selena. And it shows the step by step process of what um, her family went through in terms of making their band a reality, going around America, 
going on the tour in the circuit and how they did it step by step by step. It's it's a very interesting series to watch because if you're really interested in music and you're just beginning the entry point of creating music and you're wondering, OK, where do I go now? It kind of gives you an, an overview of the reality of such. And this yeah, it does. But it, it, it the, the thing that's difficult about Selena right now is they were such a live animal. Um, so they they built it on hard touring. On very festivals, much hard to work. Very, very much hard to work. And that, that is a, like, if you want to know the, the, the most direct way to be in the music business, if you can put 200 people in a show that will pay to see you, you're in the music business no matter what. Right there. Else. Yeah. That's a guaranteed way. But right now, it's a challenge mm -hmm. um, because you can't, like, like, I've got people that are just now starting to tour again, but it's been dead for two years. People aren't used to going out. We're facing a different deal. So, Take the Selena story with a grain of salt. What's good about it is how they do it step by step and they build an audience. They that's what I was, you. yeah, that's yeah. what I'm interested in, the, the actual business yeah. end of it, not the actual practical sense of how they did it because the, we live in a different world now. It's that simple. But um, it was the behind the scenes. What really intrigued me about that whole series was what went on behind the scenes and how careful Selena's father was when it came to contracts and really digging deep into the contracts and fighting his rights. Um, yep. with record labels concerning those contracts and getting well, the required help and so on. It's, that's what we say. So yeah. the, the next part about this in terms of the, the product, a lot of people make a mistake, you know, um, on, you know, they think if I'm making money, I'm being successful. If I'm building an audience, I'm being successful. If I'm learning, I'm being successful. All of those things are true. But some people only look at one thing well if i'm not making money then it's not worth it you know if i'm if i'm not uh building my fan base it's not worth it you know they they try to make it one thing and really it's all those things so the, the first thing that i look at and the thing where most of people start is learning and whether you're you, you've got you've got education in terms of knowledge which is one of the the three things that you're gonna be looking for in value of anything you do. If you don't get one of these three things, you probably shouldn't do whatever this is you're doing. And so if you're not gonna learn anything, the first thing is I went to school or uh, I studied or I did research. So you've got like basic education would be the first level of knowledge. The second level of knowledge is you start working for someone else or being in a part of the business. You're gonna learn some rules, some regulations, some of the laws, because there's the laws that are written and then there's the laws that are that are followed mm -hmm. uh, and those in the music business can be different you'll learn stats and then once you get enough experience then you're going to start to get contacts you've got best practices you've got data or information that nobody else has because they weren't on that tour they didn't see that record they didn't do that so knowledge which is uh really it's information the more you know the the more powerful and the more intelligent again with knowledge you can make more money you can lose less money you yes, can. and I, you know, for those that mightn't be at that level yet concerning knowledge, even just getting into the experiential side of it is a hands-on approach from, the, you know, from... Well, that, that, that's the second it. level. Yeah, that, yeah, yeah. The first thing is you want to know, hey, what is a publishing deal? Mm -hmm. What is a record deal? Like, you got to know enough to aid in your own defense. You don't yeah, want to be what, so ignorant. Yeah, but what you, I'm saying, what I'm saying is like, you know, if you think of a young artist who really would love to perform eventually on stage, just to kind of get into an experiential um, job somewhere where they're kind of banging up against fellow artists or people behind the scenes, just to understand the etiquette of the music world. I mean, it's one place to start to learn a lot. It is, but here there's a there's a really good quote. Um, I think it's Oscar Wilde, and he said, experience is the most difficult teacher because it, because it gives you the test first and then then the lesson after. <laughs> Very true. So what you're talking about is that's some, that's some that is a way to do it, but you're gonna, it's not for the faint of heart. If you oh, walk no. into an open, and yeah, you walk into an open mic night, you're gonna learn all those things, but you're gonna learn them. Pretty hard, know, pretty hard. Yeah, hard. that's what I mean. So like, what I'm saying is, why don't you do a little bit of study before you go to the second mm -hmm. level? Yeah. Unless you're just that crazy person who I got to so be so passionate. He's incredibly yeah. passionate. Yeah, 
I'm trying to I'm trying to smooth the ride wherever possible. But anyway, so the, the next part of of what I'm talking about the the value chart. So you've got you know got knowledge. The next thing is money, and how do you get money in the music business? Well, you you do work, you do a job, you've got royalties, you've got licensing. So in the in the work thing, you've got a job, you're playing a wedding, you're working on a project for somebody's re record, you're consulting, you're teaching. All of these are ways to be in the business and earn income. But the second level is you've got royalties. So now your music's being streamed, you're getting plays, you're getting referrals. So the, the great thing about royalties is you're making money when you sleep. Um, there's, some, uh, uh, there's some famous people that have a quote that if you don't learn how to make money when you sleep, you're gonna work until you die. Oh, that's so true. That's so you true. Know? And so uh, uh, then there's obviously what I do, licensing. So you, you've made a record to sell to your friends. It's still laying around Well, I go, hey, man, can I license that? I would like to uh, put it in a movie. And boy, there's some money because that will not only will it make you money from licensing, it gives you royalties every time it's played and it gives you exposure. So people want to book you and, and hire you for more jobs. Oh, my gosh. It's the trifecta. I mean, you have up here in the, in the graphic now, you know, licensing. We know about film and TV, but like sponsorships, advertising advertising even just advertising oh if you're in a commercial more people will hear your song than any exactly it is even well i won't say you know, it's better than a film and tv I, 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 but advertising is pretty it's a good place oh, to go the money on it too man like their idea you can get forty thousand dollars for an ad there you uh, so it's 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 the it's big money but you've got to really generally that happens with hit songs that have meaning and attached to them but still and, What's your opinion on streaming services like Spotify and so on? There's a lot of debate about, you know, all co well, I'm, well, my the, music on Spotify, it's like going to earn me pittance. That, that's you know, something I have to do in, a, in, our, in our future podcast. I will address that okay. completely. Uh, so let's get to the third thing. And so, you know, so we've got money, power, knowledge. In our, in our case, it's also fame, fortune, and information. So power, there's three ways you can derive power. And power is sort of like the ultimate, it's the, the crown jewel. Um, so you can have a position of power. Uh, you could have your own podcast. You could be picking the people for a festival. You could, there's a lot of things by just being in a company. I'm the A&R man. So that gives you a certain kind of power. You could have a kind of skill. I'm a really great jazz guitar player. I'm a really great engineer. That's, that's a way to, to make, to get some power because you're the best guy at this thing. Even a location, you know, I am the coolest funk bass player uh, on the Isle of Man. And so, so your, your skill combined with your location make you very powerful if somebody wants to do a great record like that. Mm -hmm. The next step, you've got a position of power. The next step is people power. You've got a network of people that you know. You've got workers that, that you're with that you can spread the word. You've got a staff. I, I can put five people in there. You've got a, you're a teacher. You've got 20 students that can, can be can be brought in to help. So people power is really good. And then ultimately, you've got the the influencer power. Pay no attention. That's my uh, battery uh, battery backup that I need to put a battery in. So it's mad at me. Um, but you've got influencer power. So everybody has friends they can tell. When you have fans and followers, you're an influencer. Beyonce is not powerful because of of all the people she knows. She's powerful because of all the people that know her. Very true. You've got fans, followers, you've got a community. If you've got influence over a legislature to get a law passed or something like that, that gives you power. So those so, are the three things. So another, qu another question here is um, for any artists getting going from the earliest stages, really, they should be putting effort into social media as much as possible, it looks like to get those fans and followers in place as fast as? I, I would give a different advice. Okay. Um, so so part of what I'm trying to do here is I'm trying to lay out the roadmap for what we're, the, the terrain that you will fight on. And in the follow-up thing, I'm gonna tell you how to fight it. Okay. All I'm trying to do here is say, here, here are all the things that you need to look at and plan for. And then you say, okay, here is, here's how you, here are different ways to fight on this terrain. Okay. Um, so anyway, so this is the value chart. So when I'm looking to do, if I'm, am I going to take that gig? Like one of the things that I do is I have my own music conference and, and uh, festival. I've done 15 of them 
And I have lost money on every single one. But it's one of the most valuable things I've ever done. Because it's positioning you. Well, the knowledge and power. I bring the most famous people in the music industry, like what you do with your podcast. Mm -hmm. And at the end of doing this, as like, think of how many people you know. Think of how oh, much stuff yes. you know. Yes, tr very true. Like, I, was like, just, I was just saying that today on a podcast I was putting out today about... Um, getting involved in networks can save you so much time in terms of trying to get knowledge or getting to the right people being around the right people even yep in yeah and, it's, and again when you say hey i'd love to talk to you i love what you're doing with your business i'd love to talk to you they're gonna go yeah i'm kind of busy but if you say to that same person hey i love what you're doing in your business and i've got a conference i'd love to put you on a panel oh what time which day totally different you know completely different deal so, so sometimes the best way to get a network is start your own. Very. Imagine true. if you were you were there and you wanted to start your own podcast in Ireland. I mean, that would be a really smart thing to do. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm being funny uh, because, <laughs> I, but it, but it is. I know. It, I'm, when when people tell me that, I think of my stats. I won't even go oh, into that. Oh yeah, yeah. This is a pan. <laughs> yeah, I won't yeah, go. There. I won't go there. Yeah, but you're you're talking about getting influencers and stuff like that. Your knowledge yeah. base. Every single one of these you do, you get stronger. You get mm. smarter. You know more people. You're building a network on top of a network. Totally, yeah. All right, so now we're, we're on to the third part of the layer. So we've talked about the people that are involved. We've talked about the process and the, the way to value, uh, you know, the the uh, or the, 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 the value, the, the products that you're doing when you're out there doing stuff. The final step on this is the processes. And there's two processes and they, there's one for, for making the music and there's another one for the marketing materials and using those things. So we'll start um, with the music making process. And I, I kind of call it, it's a, it to me, it's, a, it's like a, a standard 10, 10 step process, but a lot of people mess up towards the end of it. Most artists, as you'll see, stop after step five and think they're done. They forget six, seven, eight, nine, and 10. Um, okay. So in order to be a process, so I've got step one. So step one to me has got to be a, a step that you can't go further unless you do step one. There's no way to get to step two unless step one's done. So step one always starts with an idea and a plan. And you're going, so I'm making a record. So why, what's the first step in making a record? Well, the first step is you have to have an artist who's going to sing it and you got to have a song. If you don't have both of those things, uh, if you don't know who's singing it, well, you don't know what kind of musicians, you don't know what style of music. If you don't have uh, uh, a song, is it fast, is it slow? Who's the best guitar player? What's the best studio? Like you need an artist in a song. So if you don't write your own, find a song from a publisher, co-write with people if you need better songs. But the better you artist and the better song you start with, the more successful you're gonna be and without those two things, you can't go to step two. And step two, well, so the first step is is plan. On it's the seven P's and the and the uh, and the three R's. So the first step is to plan. Now you've got a you got a plan. We got this artist, this song. We're making this record. Now we got to prepare for it. So we call it pre production. So now you got to hire a producer. Uh, you got to book the studio. You got to travel. Do you have to travel? You have, do you have an arrangement of this song? Do you have charts for the band? Do you have any programming you need done? Everything that you need to do to get ready to record, you know, is pre-production. And so you're going to prepare. So you're going to plan. You're going to prepare. Step three, all right, let's produce the product. So producing the product for us means you're going in the recording studio. People are playing. They're singing. You're programming. There's some editing. We're getting this whole thing recorded. Once it's recorded, we've got the final step in the music-making process or the, the final step for the creative process team making the music, and that is to polish it. And polish it means we're gonna do final tweaks in the mix, we're gonna do mastering, we're gonna do any alternate mixes, make sure we got the credits. Remember that first guitar player, we hated it, we replaced him, so let's get all the credits right, get all of the paperwork we need to move forward. And once you've done steps one, two, three, and four, your creative team starts to leave. They're done making the record, you don't need a producer after this or an engineer, or all that stuff, so they're gone. So now it's time to bring in the guys with the briefcase. 
because it's time to present this great music that you've made. And in order to present the great music, it's really what we're saying is distribution. And this is this is sort of the last step that the independent artists know how to do. And that's what you were talking about before. I'm going to send it out to a digital service provider or a DSP, because unfortunately in the music business, an independent artist does not get a direct deal with iTunes or Spotify or Pandora. Like they want somebody else to go and present them, uh, it, somebody who's an approved distributor. So you're going to go to CD Baby, TuneCore, you know, whatever, whatever place you're going to do, and you're going to present it. You're going to submit it to radio, perhaps. You're going to get it on playlists, send it to somebody like me for film and TV. Hey, our record's done. We'd love to have it in a movie. You're presenting it, and, and this is where artists think, whew, I'm done, and they're not. They forgot about step six. Step, step six is you got to promote it. Just because you put it on a shelf, it doesn't sell itself if no one knows it's there. You know, so as a band or an artist or as a label, you got to talk about this new record. You got to play it to your friends. You got to do some tours, promo tours, anything you could do. Now it's time to hit that social media. Tell your fans, get a press release out. Tell everybody who's got a podcast or a, a radio show or as a DJ. You got to do live performances anywhere you can. Hit up, do radio and TV interviews. So you're doing all this promotion. Then you've got to sit there and go, okay, let's, how did we profit from this? And by profit, you want to sit and look at those, those levers and go, how do we do on the fame, fortune, and knowledge thing? So on the, the streams and the plays where we make our money, did it go up? Did how many more? Did, did they like it? Did, did, is it, how does it relate to our past songs? What are our sales, our downloads? Did we get any licenses for film and TV? Are any advertisers inter interested? Any sponsorship opportunities? They go, I love your show. We'd love to sponsor it. You know, that probably won't happen at the beginning, but those are the seven steps. You're going to plan, prepare, produce, polish, present, promote, and profit. That's Happens just every like time. a simple business plan there to get somebody on the road. Yep. That, that, well, that, that, every time you put out a new record, it's the same process. Rinse every and repeat. Yeah. So guess what the three R's are? reflect it's the first mistake that i see people make is you've done this whole single take a minute to see how did it do well like with with some of the big ad agencies like i i, I talked to jimmy omani who was uh, the uh, president of sachi and sachi worldwide and they they never did they did 100 day plans they did a 90 day plan of something they were doing and they took 10 days half of it to reflect on what they were doing you know and then the next thing you're going to do, you're going to rest, and then you're going to go, guess what? Let's do a plane to do the next one. Repeat. Very clever in there. You've rest. Reflect yep. You rest. have so to really, take some time you off. You have to take rest. You can't just keep flowing. You have to give your brain a break. Put it that well, way. Well, that's, that's the... There's a, lot, the, of, there's a yeah. lot of physical and cognitive energy going into all this. Well, and the other, the other thing, too, is that uh, um, you, uh, that's the problem I have with the way the music business works now is they don't have a rest period. And they also, you see that, you know, I've got all these different steps. Well, if you're doing a new single every 90 days, you're, you're in pre-production here, post-production there, you're marketing here, you're profiting there, you're, you're, on, you're trying to be wear five hats at once, and that does not work. It never has worked. No. We are much more of a cycle kind of thing. So that's, that's what you do to make the music. So guess what? Marketing and promotion process, same 10 steps. It's slightly different, but the first thing you start with with marketing is a plan. Okay, we've got this record. What, what is the number one thing that we have to know before we can go to step two on a marketing plan? Targets and timing. So targets and timing mean, uh, when are you putting the record out? Because if you're putting the record out in the middle of summer, I'm not gonna go shoot some pictures with you in snow gear. I have to know when the record's coming out or I can't put the appropriate marketing materials together. Also, who is going to like this? Who is the audience for this band? If I don't know that they're they're forty five year old white soccer moms, then I I would do a different campaign than what I would do for eighteen year old you know boys in on on the west coast. So uh, in, so in marketing language, they call a customer avatar really. So you kind of have an avatar of who you're directing your music at, and you need a clear understanding yep. of that side of yeah. It. If you don't have that. You're not doing it, you know. Yeah, so your messaging once you've got, yeah, 
here's my audience. Here's when I'm putting the record out. So once you do that, guess what? Time to prepare again. And it's the same thing. It's pre-production. But except this time, you finished the record. Now you gotta you got to do pre-production for you're hiring a video director, a stylist. You're, you're getting wardrobe. You're scheduling rentals, locations. We need photos. We need videos. We need all of these things to be created based to market this record. So now we got to do pre-production on that because the longer you prepare, the cheaper and better the product will be that you produce. So now you've Very prepared, true. Got, Very true. got all that together. Now it's time to produce the videos. So you're going to film and shoot and, and then you're going to select your, your, your favorite photos and you're going to edit the video and you're going to design a logo or update your logo, do your production. You're going to do backups and mock-ups and everything else on the production end. So you've got the videos and all that stuff. And then guess what you got to do? Got to polish them. So you're going to color correct. You're going to change the edit. You're going to tweak this. You're going to go, I wish that was blue. Um, you're going to fi give final approval to the, to the creative team. Uh, and say, yeah, this is the video I love. This is, this is the logo. I've updated my website. I'm going to test everything. I'm going to integrate this new look and feel on all my social media channels so that it looks like the same thing. I'm not going to your Twitter and seeing a picture from five records ago. You're going to test it. Maybe you'll say, we got three different album covers. Reach out to your fans and go, hey, we got three covers. Which ones do you like? That gets them engaged. Uh, and it's a really great way to do it. But it's you've got the first four steps. The creative team, you're not going to need the director or the photographer or any of those guys anymore. My creative team, I need my guys with the briefcase. So presenting the marketing materials, you're going to you're going to present the uh, do is out go out to media with, hey, they've got a new record. Here's what it looks like, and here's the photos. We can, we're going to try to get press. We're going to do social branding. Make sure all of our platforms and stuff are gone. We're going to do a press release. We're going to distribute the video. To, to video shows, we're going to distribute, you know, go to radio shows, go get interviews, anything that we can do, we're going to get all that stuff presented or distributed. You haven't started marketing yet. So guess what? Next step is you're going to promote it. You're going to promote and market it. You're going to go on social media to your fans, to the press, to the print, to the media. You're going to do special media events and performances, all to let everybody know your new video is out. You've got a new look. You've got a new band member. Here we go. Then you're going to do your final P. And in marketing, the, the the adage is, if you can't if you can't measure it, don't do it. Now we all still wing it and market a little bit, but we got to measure and count as much as we can. When we started this campaign, how many fans and followers did we have on social media? I'm just listening to all of this now, and I'm thinking of the planning stage and laying out costings and. Well, that, that is why I lay this out. So you get the streams, you get the sales and downloads. I'll just do my last little bit and then we'll take a break yeah. so we can go through this. And then again, when you finish a marketing plan, you want to reflect on it. You want to say, you know what? When we did all this tour support stuff, our numbers went great. When we promoted a radio, nothing happened. So the next single, take all the money you were doing at radio, put it in touring or vice versa. You got to take a break from this too. You want to rest and say, I really liked going out with those outfits but they were so hot on stage or we didn't like this or they loved our video or nobody reacted to the video. You've got to take an accounting. You've got to take a break, clear your head, and then it's time to repeat and do it better next time. So now let's talk about this is what, what I was talking about, too, is when you can see all of those things that are required, man, you've got to take a lot of time. If you, you can be out of time or out of money, you can't be out of both. Yes, and the thing that's really screaming at me looking at the whole thing is costings um, to have an idea of what you're going to incur in cost. Um, and it's something that with the spreadsheet, if I was going through that process or planning to go through that process, it's one of the first things I think I do to try and get a handle on where I'm heading. And because you are a very smart person and that's what you have to do. Yeah. Um, because here's the deal, the, the adage, and again, take this with a grain of salt, but mm -hmm. Um, for every dollar you spent making your record, you better have three to five dollars to market it. Yes. And most independent artists do not spend it that way. And when you say marketing, like, would you do paid adverts on all the social media platforms or do you prefer to do it organically, building it organically? Most everybody is 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 building things organically now. The the sales 
thing just doesn't work in, in nearly as well. It's not like, and then this is the news, I, you know, six months from now, I may tell you something different, mm -hmm. but right now, most of us are not doing a bunch of paid advertising. Yeah, I hear We're a lot trying, of people walking you know, away from us, the paid yep, advertising. Because it, it doesn't work anymore. It used to. It used, yeah, exactly. Yeah. But it, that's the thing. Things are changing, but you do have it's to market. A, yes. And the thing about it is as well, is it's relationship building. Just because you're looking at somebody on a screen whom you don't know lives somewhere in some location, there are still people at the other side you have to build relationships with. And well, what I think, thing, yeah. Go ahead, go, no, you go ahead, please. No, I was going to chime because so, so as part of my on my conference and stuff, anytime I had social media people, you know, or, or that stuff, I'm going. I want to know everything I can about this stuff. So I brought in branding experts. Uh, we had. Rick Barker, who was Taylor Swift's first manager, like he's super smart at this stuff. Uh, Scott Warner, um, who's was one of the guys, and and one of the, what he when he said when he talked about like so Rick's famous quote that I, I really took away. He goes, "If uh, if every time you reach out to your you get a friend and every time they call you, it's can you help me move? Hey, I need you to watch my kid. Can you uh, can I borrow your car? Can I do this? Can you help me do that? Can you drive me here?" Uh, how long are you going to be friends with that person? Not very long. No, but every artist does that to their fans. I need this. I want that. Gimme, gimme, gimme. He said, don't do it that way. No. For for every ask, give two offers. Hey, I'm playing this show. I've got some free tickets. You know, I got a couple of them. Who wants to go? Exactly. I've got this other thing. Give, give your fans, be their friend. Give, go, hey, man, I thought of you guys, you know, we're going to be doing this thing, you know, we're doing this gig, but there's a beautiful park out there. Hey, you guys want to go throw the Frisbee and stuff? Me and the band are going to be there early. Why don't you guys meet us and we'll uh, kind of have well, fun. Well, here's a story that just came up on, I think it was at NPR uh, Music News today. And it was about a Ukrainian celebrity artist seeing what's going on in his home country, can't perform to huge venues now. And he's literally sitting in a car going to the most dangerous areas, taking food and medicines and what have you. And he's meeting people at petrol stations and they're saying, oh, wow, just I need a hug. Can you just great to see you? And he's giving people a lift as he's going around helping people. He's a real artist. Yeah. When his life returns to performing. He's he'll be sold out. Yeah, he'll be so sold out. And there's more artists then and they're coming out with a very angry tone to their music, which concerns me. Justified anger. Yes. But finish it with love, empathy and compassion at the end of the day to try and create a balanced, you know, performance. But that's my own opinion on it. But I just remarked that, you know, artists have this huge influence. And it's when they get a following, their influence can be so used in such a great way. And one of that is take themselves out of the picture and look at the people they're serving. Oh, yeah. yeah it can't be all about you. So no. the point I was going to make is Scott Warner said, when you're when you're looking at your 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 fans, you've got to create something that is like the Olympic flag, mm -hmm. a bunch of circles interacting. So of course, music's one of your circles, but find some some ways to reach out to people. Like I, I, a friend of mine was mainly an artist, and uh, and he was a surfer from Australia. So every time he went surfing, he would go blast on social media. I'm going to Bondi Beach. Who wants to surf with? And so he has a whole surfer clique, right? Yeah, yeah. I have yeah. A, an artist in in uh, in Singapore who uh, who's a big foodie, so she'll go. She'll write a restaurant report. Right. Um, okay. My daughter ha had a band, and she was looking for her merch and stuff. She loves coffee, so for her merch, she sold coffee mugs with the band name on it, and then we got a company, uh, Dunn Brothers Coffee, to to create a special blend of coffee that she bought and packaged it with her own bags and called it Ruse Brew because the band name <laughs> is Ruse. Brilliant name. And so, yeah, so so they so the other thing I kind of believe is refillable merch. Yes. Buy, yeah. like, when they're buying your merch, they can only buy your record so many times. Mm -hmm. Have That's something cool. else they can do to buy to support you. Yeah. Just get creative. And it's something really. that's edible. Well, I knew a Cajun band. They sold all these Cajun spices. And people would, even though they had probably a gallon of it at home, oh, I gave that to my neighbor, you know, give them yeah, an excuse. Well, I mean, people buy. buy gifts, don't they, for their friends and, you know, things like this. Yeah. So it all so, sells. 
Yeah, so there's a lot of smart, positive things you can do. Oh, 100%, yeah. Yeah. So this next part, I just want to wrap this up. I only got two slides left. And one of the things people talk about, especially because I grew up not in a major music world. You know, my parents were singers and stuff, but you always got that feeling you were just kind of a foolish dreamer to think you could be in the music business. Well, I need that. Okay, just as a precursor now to this, because I kind of know what's coming here. So many people are fixated on if I can't be a performer or I can't be a composer, something in that line, I'm done. I can't get into the music world. Well, wait for this. Listen to this. Please continue. Yeah, and it's it's yeah, it's not. And so it's a little bit like a, like an army. For every soldier that's on the front lines, it takes ten or fifteen people to put them there. It's the same thing for everybody on stage. For when you look at like Madonna or Adele. Madonna travels with a hundred semis. A hundred like, you know, semis? A hundred. Wow. Yeah, when she does one of her tours, I mean, it is crazy the number of people that she employs. It isn't 10 to 1, I'll tell you that right now. So the first thing that I, I went into is is the jobs that are the creative jobs, that where you do have to have that talent. But there's 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 a, the, the people you know about, but what about arrangers? What about beatbox people or mastering engineers or mixing engineers you've got producers you've got beat makers you've got rappers you've got studio musicians you've got songwriters and composers you've got all these creative music people but there's also creative marketing jobs there are people that are designers and do graphics do illustrations they're editors they're animators they're graphic people they're pr people that are creative that make all of the content for social media there are video directors and producers and web designers and programmers and, uh, and bio writers. Like, here's the first rule, man. Do not write your own bio. Oh, no, you're, it's very difficult. You can't you're gonna see yourself. You're going to do a bad job. Yeah, no. 100%. Yeah. I, I, don't let a, I don't let a single artist I work with write their own bio. I bring in a no. professional writer. And it'll be people you've known forever. You're going, dude, you didn't tell me that you had a twin? Oh, I never came up. What? We would one guy that we was working for us. He was a quint, part of a quintuplet, and he does at the very end of our get to know you. And oh yeah, I should say I should have said this earlier. I'm a quintuplet. You know like, what? You got like four or five people that look like you. Oh, that's so okay. Hard. Yeah, you could bring that up a little earlier in your story. Writing, you know? no, but I have to say, writing is a skill. It is completely big time a skill. Yeah, painting with words. Oh, totally. Um, yeah. So then, then we go into the music business jobs. Hey, if you've got an accounting degree, why not account for Drake? You know, booking agent, obviously brand manager, sponsorship, festival director. You could do straight distribution. You could do in-store, retail music provider, meaning I, I put the playlist together for all the uh, the uh, the 200 Italian grocery stores. I do this. I, you know, mm -hmm. a manager, a, a radio programmer. Uh, you can own a recording studio. Now, you just you said something there. You just said something there. There is a unique opportunity. Putting playlists together for a grocery store. Yep. There are people that do that. There's a, a thing, Forever 21. It's kind of a store that has cute little knickknacks, and it's in every mall in the United States. Yes. They, they put together a new playlist uh, every month. Who and so that was guy, a career path? Yeah, that you can have. You know, I know, I know people that that's a job. And it's going up. Sonic, it's called Sonic Branding. And it's creating a mood in an in an environment, in a restaurant, in a bar. Yes. Oh, completely, yeah. 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 It's part so of the branding. Then you've got all these what we call support jobs. Well, live staging and sound. Yeah, I put up the lights. I put up the this. I'm a music director. I'm a I'm a studio a live musician. I play with this band. I tour. I got a music store. I I fix instruments. I'm a music therapist. Uh, I'm a stage manager. I handle operations. I sell tickets. I'm a tour manager. I, I uh, you know, I'm a, a healthcare uh, specialist who specializes in repetitive hand injuries for drummers and guitar players. I'm a therapist for people that are under tremendous stress. I talk them down so they can go and do their next gig when they have a panic attack. Um, so it, there are so many of those things. I'm a music teacher. I'm a band director. Mm -hmm. uh, and then you've got the final category of music jobs, which are uh, I do advertising, commercials, and trailers. I'm, I'm a journalist. I'm a music supervisor, which I am. I put songs in movies. If you guys don't make your music, I got nothing to put in there. I'm a podcaster. I'm a DJ. I'm a radio programmer. I, that's where I've got the sonic branding put. 
I've got a video show. I've got an online interview show. I've got a podcast. All of those things. I probably said podcast already. But I mean, these I heard, are. I heard a career path for a singer specializing in singing for advertisements and very yeah. good income out of it. Very the, good. The royalties are outrageous. I, I used to do. Unreal. Yeah, I spent, I spent 10 years singing jingles, man. It was very nice. Uh, and what's amazing about all these, so we, we're, we're sitting here and when you, if you do get a chance to see the screen, there's like, I mean, literally, th it's 50, there are, at least 50 here, I'd say. I'm, yeah, I'm not counting, least, but in or around that number, at least, yeah, probably more. At least, at least 50 options. jobs. And that doesn't include every little, uh, I'm a wardrobe specialist. I'm a mm. choreographer. You know, some of those things are in there, but we didn't list everything by any means. And what's amazing is, you got to multiply that times 26 different main genres. Which just for our listeners, ancient music, bluegrass, blues, children's, classical, comedy, novelty, country, easy listening and vocals, electronic and dance, folk, hip hop, holiday Christmas music, jazz, Latin, metal, music, theater, new age, pop, R&B, soul, reggae, religious, rock, score composer, sound design, EFX, spoken word, world and global music. 26 different genres. Everyone. Yeah, that every one of those people to to one extent or another needs all of these jobs done. There's no excuse really, I think, in the sense that if you want to be in the music world, go for it. Just do your research. Yeah. And and the, and the, get this around map, the right people. Well, and, and and this map that I've got um, that I'm displaying here is everything, every slide that I showed before, but it basically when you're when you're looking at where you are this 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 should like I'm, I'm trying to create something an infographic that is like when you go to the shopping mall you are here you should be well, able to what i'm going to do go. for the listeners to this podcast i'll put a link to this infographic infographic in the show notes but um basically everything that you've heard is on this infographic and it's something that you could print off and put up on your wall just for consideration and well, just to really you know, having yeah. it as a starting point of understanding. Well, it's not just a starting point. What's crazy about it is when you're sitting here and putting a plan together. Well, I'm know, thinking, whatever. when I think of starting points, I'm thinking, okay, I have to cost out what I want to do. And I see there's seven steps there in the music process. There's marketing and promo promotion process and other seven steps with a further three additional. You know, that's what I mean by starting point is that well, what, what else an overview you and then you can start well, it works like that, but it also works. Let's say you're coming into a project in the middle and say, okay, like, you know, I'm a manager. I'm coming in. Well, what have you done? Well, we've got this recorded. We've got a plan to do this. We've got to do that. So, so you can sit there and talk with them and go, okay, you're at step four. You're at step seven. You skipped a step. You know, you're able to, like the mall, where are you in this process? Yes. Have you got your groundwork done properly? Yeah. Yeah. Are, are you on step three when you didn't do step two? Mm -hmm. mm, let's go back, go back and yeah, let's take, check this. Or have you just finished your thing and now you're already recording the new record, but wh what did you, how did you do? Well, I don't know. We kind of, well, we did some, you know, no, no, no. I need some numbers. Did you make money? Did you build fans? Where did you start? Where did you finish? Yeah. So there's some homework to do. And then all of the support jobs are listed too kind of smattered around there and the the value chart too hey here's a you know here's here's what we got out of this event because you, you you can go back and do a lot of reflecting you know you can go to step eight and go I want to reflect on everything I've done in the past what was good what was bad and kind of give yourself a pass fail because then you start you know you could start with if you've got prior knowledge let's use it oh completely if you don't let's let's try let's start from here like if you're st like this is i don't think i would show anybody this to prove that was going to get in the music business as the first step because it will scare the crap out of you um because it is complex and they're the do-it-yourself thing the one thing i do not believe in diy you can't well i think what you're showing here is you're showing that there's quite a number of people involved in getting just a record produced and then following it on then and promoting it and all of that and yep. then when you incur licensing and all the legal end of it, like you do need a team of people. You do need a network. Yep. And um, can't do it yourself. You, no, no in this, no, you can't. You can't. You can start at the very steps one, two kind of thing, maybe. But as you move on, you do need other people because I'm 
you know, the more I learn about the music industry, the more I learn about licensing. Obviously, the big story about contracts, everybody knows that if they've any ears on them, they'd have heard stories. Like, you you need help. You need professional help in areas. Well, it's like, and imagine if you were sick. Well, if you were sick, do you want uh, your, your girlfriend doing the brain surgery or would you like to bring in a specialist? Yeah, exactly. 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 You know, for, yeah, it's like everybody... Everybody wants a deal until it really means something. Well, how about your art? Doesn't it mean something? Mm. You know, it's like there's a there's a joke in the music business. Uh, if you think I'm expensive, hire an amateur. See what that costs you. Now I have a question yeah. here. You've you've assembled all this here, okay? Yes. And you've been in the music industry for how long now? Uh, forever. I'm old, so it's let's call it let's be kind and call it forty years. Okay. So what has been your biggest realization or your biggest learning through this whole process? You know, just, just doing this, just documenting, like this is, this was not new news. I've been involved. I've been uniquely involved in, in someone in almost every aspect. And I, I've never seen it all put down like this. I've never seen like I, I like most of us like I, I was joking any any of the industry people that i've shown this to no one says i got a thing wrong no one says but you you've forgot. it all covered you've it completely covered i mean and i but, think but every, really... everybody who sees it has a sick feeling of we've been in this business we we know how all these things work we know what gets done but why is it this the first time we're actually looking at it all at once? Yeah, for 10,000 10, foot, if, if you will. Yeah, yeah. I've never yeah. seen a map of this. This is my first time seeing a map of what I've been doing. It's like like I was joking with you earlier. You know, it's you're in a dark jungle. And we're Please fighting don't. wild animals and cutting through weeds and all this. And we, we know all of these things occur. But we've never gotten up on a mountain or up in a tree to look at the whole thing from afar. And this mm -hmm. is a look at an overview an, an aerial view of of the terrain that you're going to be on and it's very interesting steps eight nine and ten reflect rest repeat and the thing i like about that is i heard a story about murdoch you know the big media mogul murdoch and he, it was said about him that he would spend most of his time reflecting he would delegate tasks to get jobs done and all the rest but most of his time was reflection uh, I, I found myself having to do much more reflection than I ever. I, I'm, I'm doing exactly that. That was one of the things I'm learning to do is to, I can't be fighting in the jungle, fighting all this by myself. I need to spend more time on the mountain looking down. There, the lead, exactly. The leader has to reflect and then know to whom to delegate um, yep. to take on. And what, where are we failing? Where are we succeeding? Where, you exactly. know. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. And why are we doing this? There better be a good answer. You know, like I was working with a, a management team now and they're going on a big tour and I asked the manager point blank, okay, so you're doing this tour, you're going, doing promo, you've got three weeks or three, it's almost three months they're going out. I'm going, what's your hit single? And she gave me the very clever, I, I really like this song. I said, wait a minute, you're going in there putting all this marketing money and you don't think you have a screaming hit single? Let me help you go make another record. Don't, the one thing I tell people, this is kind of good. There are 45,000 songs being uploaded on Spotify every day. Kind of good's not gonna cut it. Well, yes, and you'll be hemorrhaging <clears throat> money. Yeah, you can't compete on that. So the other thing too is I, I think people have to reimagine what a single is. So, so in the past we used to do We'd go and make a record. We'd have three songs that were screaming hit radio singles. And then you made, you put, filled it up the rest of the record with whatever you want. Can't do that this, these days. Everything has to have a reason for being there. So I'm working with an artist that I, I made a record on. He's really, really talented singer. And what we're doing is we're going in with the album. And when we made the album, we had a way to market all 10 songs. Um, one of them is like a sports fight song, like a We Will Rock You replacement. So we it's not a necessarily a radio hit, but we are going to target that for sports teams. <laughs> that sounds fun. Um, yeah, it's, it's killer, too. Yeah. Uh, it's called It Ain't Over. You know, it's like the fourth quarter rally. You know, it's yeah. it's, it's tied up 3-3, three, three, you know. Uh, <laughs> oh, I, could, I could see it. I could visualize it. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And, yeah. Uh, 
And again, sometimes you got to be, you got to listen. Like, so we did two ballads. One of them was a, a song her mom was having, was uh, in a hospital with cancer. And she was watching a, an Oprah episode uh, about Lance Armstrong's wife, the, the bicyclist, you know, the, mm. the guy who once ran, ran the French, you know, grand tour or whatever it is. Yes. <laughs> and, um, and they, they were going, now you've gotten divorced from Lance and uh, how's that been? She goes, well, when, when, I lo when I lost him, I found me. And she went, wow. What? And she said, I used to have an ad agency. I used to do all these things. And then I eventually allowed myself to become Mrs. Armstrong. And I took care of the kids and I enabled him to realize all his dreams that I was no longer interesting to him. And I wasn't really interesting to myself either. And so when I lost him, I found me. And so we said, all right, there's your song title. <laughs> I found me, right? Yeah, and, and that comes that comes back to something as an artist. Some artists are so honed into music that their frame of reference is like music. And the more you listen to, the more you expose yourself to, suddenly you'll, you'll hear something like that somewhere and you get a moment of inspiration. So so we do that song and it's, and it was really kind of a little pop ditty, you know, it's like, you know, it's a, it's a really well written song. I, we love it and we did uh, get a great recording of it. But we also wrote another song uh, called She Never Felt a Thing about this really like, like, uh, Basically, my, my theory is a smart woman beats a smart man every time. Uh, and and uh, but when you get a bad woman, they wreak havoc beyond what a man can do. You know, they they can just leave a, a, a path a of broken hearts and dreams. Yeah, oh, trail. my God. So we do this whole story and it's so incredibly crafted. We you do the same treatment as we did the other one. So it's a live string dated capital records and all this incredible stuff i got financing so we we spent you know being honest like fifty sixty thousand dollars on the record but we made it like a quarter of a million dollar record like you know it was no it sounded like we had all the money in the world um and so this one song i think is the best one of the best songs i've ever ever written and you know i just think it's incredible and everybody goes yeah that's kind of cool no one thinks the same thing. The stupid I found me, every time she plays it, people cry. Women cry. <laughs> I mean, we, we, we played on a piano in a hotel lobby. Women cry. We've got it on a, on a she did a big outdoor festival the, you know, in Houston. Women cried. We're in the recording studio. We're, we're shooting video at Capitol. We're doing the live string date and I've, she's got a couple of her friends there and we've got her in, the, this, in this one part of the studio pretending like she's singing live with the orchestra, you know, yeah. we're in Studio B, so we're shooting down and she's singing on an old vintage mic and the real string date is going on downstairs. So they're shooting the whole thing. I'm down there really actually working. And her friends, whilst her friends hearing the song and she starts crying there. Even her, even her friend, hey, I'm working in the studio today. You want to come see? Me? She starts crying, you know? So we're going, clearly we have a winner, folks. And it's not the song Barry Lights. Yeah. At all. As if you can make some money feel, yeah, it's like I'm going. Do you know it comes back to this whole notion of the market decides? Yeah. Oh, big time. All the time. The market decides. They well, there's, either there's love a what they love or they hate what they hate. That piece of crap, I can't believe it, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, like I wrote a song called How Do You Talk to an Angel? I'm going, number one pop hit, 50 nations. I'm going, you're kidding me. That song? You know, I mean, we wrote it for the for a movie. I co-wrote it with the some some of my people. I wrote a lot of the movie stuff with, and that thing just took off. And I mean, and it's not the greatest song ever. It's good, but I got better songs, please, you know. But but the world doesn't Market care. Market decides. Yeah. yeah. Market decides. Yeah, yeah. It's like they they. I wish they would listen to me more. Is there anything you can do, Sylvia? Please, I would like. <laughs> I'd like a little more control or perception of control. No, I don't think so. The market will always decide. That's Dang what you can see anyway. Yeah. That's it. So you could have a, a golden platter with beautiful music on it, but the market will decide. That's what I can see anyway. Well, yeah. listen, in the second episode of this interview, what are we going to cover? Just to give well, listeners an, I've, an idea. I've got several choices. What would you like to cover? Solution-based conversations. Always. So I'm into Always. Always solution. We've seen the overview, the 10,000 foot overview. So we'll dig deeper into the how to next time. Yeah. Well, what I can, what I'd like to do is I, I would offer to do two more. 
Here's two more. Can, Fair enough. You want yeah. a three part series? Okay. Yeah, I you think so. It. So you got it. So number two would be now that I've shown you the terrain, I, I think it'd be fun to, to to go through a bunch of really positive, unique tricks. Because at a certain point there's strategy, but then there's a bag of tricks. Like in songwriting, the inspiration on songwriting for me runs out about halfway through the song. Well, how long have you been songwriting? Oh forever. I mean forever. Since on CT. 16. Yeah, yeah. You just adore music, don't you? Yeah, yeah. I, you adore yeah. it. Yeah. And what's your favorite what's your favorite genre of music if you were to choose like rock or hip hop or whatever? Like what's your genre? If I could only do one, like I tend because of the film and TV, I tend to work in a lot of them. But if I could only do one, soul music. Mm -hmm. R&B. All the way. Oh, my, so it's my my single favorite. I love indie rock, I like singer songwriter, I like good country, I like jazz, I love all those things. But if I could only do one, it's that. It's all. Yeah, it's uh, my dad used to drive around with like the first Barry White record on an eight track, you know. And so we. And you've, you've performed we were, on big stages? I have. With uh, whom? Uh, so I was a music director for Randy Crawford. So I did a world tour with her. And we did like this. We played Sydney and all, all over there. We, in the Philippines, we played two dates in front so of 10 all around the world as well. And. A little, little bit of that. And then I, I went on tour with Ruth McCartney. We went to Russia and did okay. a TV show called Steps to Parnassus. And uh, we'd written a song called Ruskai, called Russian Nights. And at that time, this was before the wall came down, they only had two TV channels. We were on the fun one. So we, we released this little video because we were going to do a couple dates in, in Moscow. And then we were going to Armenia to do um, a week of benefit concerts for the Armenian earthquake fund. Mm -hmm. So we go and do the, the thing. We release the video and they say the video is doing really, really good. We're going great. Then we do their steps to their kind of American idol show. Mm -hmm. And we didn't know it went out to a hundred million people. Wow. Yeah. And, uh, and they'd been playing the video on that channel. So we get down to Armenia and they're going, uh, we moved to a bigger venue. I said, well, what do you mean bigger venue? We were supposed to be in a club that held 500 people. <laughs> I love the accent. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, they, it was exactly like that. And of course, yeah. at that time, we had our own KGB agents assigned to us. You know, we're the doing the yards, hey, yeah. take your pencil and twist the phone and we'll keep getting no, I tell you what we do. You know, it's like <laughs> it was all cloak and dagger weird stuff. Oh. Uh, and so uh, they moved it to an 8,000 seater basketball arena. For oh. eight days, we sold it out, double shows on the weekend. You know, so it was like, like we were in the Philippines too. We did, we did. Uh, and what period maybe, of the, what was it, this back in the nineties or? Late eighties, right, right before the walking down. Yeah. Okay. Uh, and, and I've, I, I've done some other stuff. I, I went on tour with some country artists. I've done, you know, yeah, just enough to, to know what that life feels like. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And, uh, and it's so demanding. It, it's, oh, it's demanding, exciting, but demanding. Well, when you wake up and you go, what country is this? Okay. You know, that, you're on a certain level of, that's a that's a level of touring that that yeah. most people don't know about yeah. yeah i woke up in singapore and didn't know where i was it's a holiday inn it's here i i somebody needs to tell me what country this is i forgot yeah and you're just crashing when you can crash and then just get up and get at it again oh yeah and then you know yeah it was uh it was different yeah. but i mean it's it's all these things are, are fascinating you know they, no, but they, what's very interesting, they, well, for the Music Secrets Exposed podcast, what's very interesting is to, you know, what goes on behind the scenes? What are the big secrets? A lot of things. Oh, have I got secrets? <laughs> some I'll have to change some names, okay? Yeah, yeah. You can't tell you, you know. Um, yeah. uh, so so there, there's that part. One of the things about interesting about traveling is, is we had an American band and Australian crew. Mm -hmm. And what that means is someone's almost always getting run over. Because depending on which side of the road people are on, like, you know. In, I know, anything, yeah, yeah. Yeah, you're kind of going like this and you're about to get run over. Like some, somebody <laughs> Which was side of the about, road are you supposed to be on? Yeah, and then there's, there's when you're driving on the wrong side, you know, we're used to like, so you settle over. So everyone's yeah. in danger of a, of a high-speed collision head-on. Oh, thing. yeah, totally, you're the, yeah. Well, you're supposed to be your driving side with no wheel and your, yeah. your idiot friend has you five feet over the line. He's, he's going to live, but you're dead as a doornail if, if, if you know. So there's oh, elements of that, 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 that's it. that. That's another film in the making. Oh, going yeah. Going on a show and driving on the different sides of the road. 
Yeah, so I'll, I'll go through a the overview of all that stuff, and I do want to talk about Spotify, and I do want to talk about all those things. Now, in the next episode, so I really want to get into this whole notion of streaming, um, the numbers behind all of that, I know um, what the expectations are, what the reality is. Well, there's um, some, there's some dirty, that. weird things going on, and I'll give you all the numbers. I mm -hmm. Because we're going for funding, I know every stupid number by heart how much yeah. money like right it's very, now they, it's it's very revealing so tune in for the next one tune in for the next one in, in the well, one after that i will do how to write songs for film and tv that have a better chance of getting licensed that is excellent looking and that will be very it. proactive I, I do i've done it for the grammys and people like that it'll be just like this 30 minutes and when i tell you this stuff it'll double your chances of getting placed there you are so listeners tune in so part three, baby. With Barry coughing. Okay.